Hello students, welcome to the lecture series of fluid mechanics. Myself, Professor Dhruv Patel. In our last lecture, we have learned about hydroelectric power plant and basic efficiency or related to hydroelectric power plant. In today's lecture, we will learn about Pelton wheel turbine. Dear yes, students, so this is basic turbine which use water as an input and we will get some energy as a output. Now as per the sketch, at some height, some water is stored at some level with the use of dam. From the dam, water is coming from the pan stroke, right? We have learned about pan stroke. What do you mean by pan stroke? So it is large diameter pipe which is used to transfer water from dam to the turbine inlet. Clear students? So water is coming from the pan stroke. One nozzle it attached at the entrance point of the pan stroke because of the kinetic energy purpose because at the entrance of nozzle area is minimum so velocity should be maximum so we can get kinetic energy at, at the inlet of the turbine right students so from the nozzle one jet of water is attacking on the blades of the turbine and turbine is rotating with respect to center clear students here casing is used for the safety purpose right student and spear if we regulate this spear if we rotate this spear in any direction then we can regulate the inlet water amount quantity that's why we can regulate kinetic energy at the inlet of the turbine clear students so from the sketch pelton wheel turbine is tangential flow impulse turbine means water is attacking at the tangential direction to the blade next one is only kinetic energy available at the inlet because with the use of nozzle the only kinetic energy is available at the inlet right students so let us understand basic animation of the Pelton wheel turbine so you might get better understanding. So from the pan stroke some water is coming this is nozzle and no, with the use of nozzle jet of water is attacking on the blades of the turbine right. So turbine is rotating if the turbine is rotating then the shaft will be rotated and we can get shaft power as a output from the shaft power we can rotate generator as well as we can generate electricity also clear students. So some basic components of the Pelton wheel turbine. First one is nozzle. So generally nozzle is used for the increasing kinetic energy or flow regulating arrangement. Here flow regulating arrangement is spear, right? So spear is generally used for the flow regulation purpose. Runner with the bucket. Here blades of the Pelton wheel turbine is with the size of bucket and two hemispherical shapes, right? So that is known as runner with the bucket casing casing is generally used for the safety purpose and braking jet if we want to stop braking wheel suddenly then we have to impact one braking jet from here also in opposite direction of the rotation so it will stop immediately right students so let us understand basic velocity triangles for the pelton wheel turbine for the pelton wheel turbine here hemispherical shape See student double hemispherical shape or bucket shape blade is shown. Water is entering at the tangential direction. So here water is entering from this direction. So let us take first of all input inlet velocity triangle IVT. At the inlet velocity triangle first of all we have to draw jet velocity V1. So from starting point A let us draw this jet velocity V1 in the right hand side direction clear. So V1 is there. Now blade velocity is always less than jet velocity but in similar direction for the tangential flow so here we have to draw from the starting point u1 that means blade velocity it is obviously less than v1 clear students now v1 will be there u1 will be there v1 minus u1 that means we can find relative velocity here it is right suppose value of v1 that will be 50 meter per second and value of u1 that will be 10 meter per second. So what is relative velocity? So value of relative velocity will be 50 minus 10. That means we are one here, right? We can write we are one is equal to V one minus U one clear students. So now V one you can understand U one you can understand and V R one is completed, right? Next is two components of V one. We have to write V F one and V W one. We remember it. Vf1 is flow velocity and Vw1 is whirl velocity. So for the flow velocity, it is vertical component of the turbine. But here component itself a horizontal. So that means Vf1 
is equal to zero, right? So here there is no VF one and component VW one is equal to V one because V one is also a horizontal component, right? So V one is equal to VW one. Clear, students? So at the inlet velocity triangle, alpha one, beta one, VF one, all value will be zero, right? Let us understand outlet velocity triangle OVT. For the outlet velocity triangle, first of all we have to show V R one velocity is here. From the impact, outward side velocity will be first of all V R two, right? Then we have to put value of U two here. So U two is in right hand side direction. So here two velocity is this V R two and U two. So we have to draw resultant velocity like this. This is called as V two. Remember, students, in the triangle of V R two. V2 and U2, V2 will be resultant, right? Now two components of V2, that means vertical components is VF2 and horizontal component is VW2, right? So as shown in this sketch, first of all we have to draw VR2, then we have to draw U2, then resultant velocity V2, then vertical component of the V2 is VF2 and horizontal component of the V2 is VW2. Clear, student? Got it? Now angle between. relative velocity and blade velocity that is known as beta that means for the outlet beta 2 and angle between v2 and direction of jet that will be alpha 2 so here as shown in this sketch beta 2 and alpha 2 will be there right if there is no blade our jet will be in moving in this direction right but with the use of blade jet is moving in this direction so this is called as our deflection angle Why? Clear, students. This is called as our deflection angle. Why? From the sketch, if this angle is beta two, so from the alternate angle, this is also beta two. So here we can write deflection angle is equal to one eighty minus beta two. Clear? You have to remember basic velocity triangle for this turbine. Then and then you can only solve this example. Right? Now let us derive its force equation. So first of all, from this sketch, u one is equal to u two is equal to U you can write U one is equal to U two so pi d n by sixty here from the inlet velocity triangle alpha one and beta one will be zero and also V F one that will be zero here we can write V one is equal to V W one from this sketch clear students next one is V R one from this sketch relative velocity that means total velocity V one minus velocity U one that means you can write V one minus U right. So instead of V R one, we can write V one minus U. Next one is let us consider smooth blade. For the smooth blade, there is no losses, so we can write V R one is equal to V R two. So for the smooth blade, force exerted by jet, that means mass flow rate rho a V one into x direction inlet component minus x direction outlet component. This equation is already done in the impact of jet. So here f x rho a V one. X direction inlet component. So here velocity component in inlet x direction that means V W one in right hand side. So that means plus V W one. Then x direction outlet component. So V two component outlet V W two. But in the left hand side. So we have to write minus V W two here minus minus plus. So we can write rho a V one V W one plus V W. to clear student this is called as force exerted by jet on turbine blades right then work done per second is equal to fx into u instead of fx let us put this value rho a v1 v w1 plus v w2 into u now for the hydraulic efficiency we have already derived many times in the impact of jet efficiency will be output by input for the turbine output will be work done and input will be kinetic energy so output will be work done per second rho a v1 v w1 plus v w2 into u and kinetic energy per second that means one half mass flow rate rho a v1 into v1 square from the simplification rho a v1 rho a v1 got cancelled and hydraulic efficiency will be two times v w1 plus v w2 into u divided by v1 square this is known as hydraulic efficiency now let us derive equation for maximum turbine efficiency so this is equation of efficiency we have to derive a condition for maximum efficiency so from the sketch we can write here v1 is equal to v w1 right and v w2 that means this distance we can write this whole distance that means vr2 
cos beta 2 so vw2 that means vr2 cos beta 2 minus our velocity of blade u2 that means vr1 is equal to vr2 so vr1 cos beta 2 minus u2 clear students instead of vr1 we can write v1 minus u so v1 minus u cos beta 2 minus u right so let us put all the these two value vw1 and vw2 in the our main equation so efficiency will be this and if you put value of vw1 here and vw2 here then from the simplification v1 minus u we can take it common so efficiency equation will be two times v1 minus u 1 plus cos beta 2 into u divided by v1 square right from this equation efficiency only depends on v1 and u right for the maximum efficiency let us take condition here derivation of efficiency with respect to blade velocity is equal to zero here blade velocity we can change according to our z so we have to take derivation with respect to blade velocity so we can take d by du into efficiency is equal to zero so in this equation 2 1 plus cos beta 2 divided by v1 square got common so d by du v1 minus u into u inside the differentiation let us take multiplication v1 into u minus u square is equal to zero from the differentiation we can write inside v1 minus 2u is equal to zero clear students so here two components are there suppose let us take first component is x into second component is y so for the product of x and y we is zero either x will be zero or either y will be zero so here first component that means 2 into 1 plus cos beta 2 divided by v1 square that not will be zero in any condition clear students so our second component that means v1 minus 2u that will be zero for product zero so that means u is equal to v1 divided by 2 so we can also write z velocity is twice than blade velocity or blade velocity is half than z velocity for maximum efficiency suppose your z velocity will be 100 meter per second then your blade velocity will be 50 meter per second for maximum efficiency clear students so here in the wording i have written down so we can say that for maximum efficiency of pelton wheel turbine blade velocity must be half than z velocity right so u is equal to v1 by 2 so let us revise pelton wheel turbine again in the pelton wheel turbine following components are there first of all casing will be there then pen stroke with the use of pen stroke nozzle is attached at the nozzle one spear or flow regulating arrangement is there and braking jet is arranged at opposite direction to the rotation of the turbine right it is simply called as impulse turbine and only kinetic energy is available at the inlet of the turbine right then we have to draw velocity triangle for the pelton wheel turbine in the examination you have to remember velocity triangle only right from the velocity triangle we can derive force exerted by z on turbine blade fx will be mass flow rate into x direction inlet velocity minus x direction outlet velocity after putting value we can derive this equation for efficiency if we want to derive equation for maximum efficiency then from the sketch we have to find value of vw1 and vw2 so here we have to find value of vw1 and vw2 from the sketch if you put value of vw1 and vw2 here then we can obtain simple velocity equation like this right from this equation we can say this efficiency depends on v1 u and beta 2 generally angle is constant for the any type of a turbine blade from the manufacturer but we can change v1 and u from the basic mathematics you have to remember that from the maximum velocity you have to differentiate that quantity and differentiation with respect to any quantity will be zero for the maximum value right because for the maximum value it is one point at the point there will be no slope that means differentiation will be zero so if we take differentiation of efficiency with respect to blade velocity then we will get u is equal to v1 by 2 that means for the maximum efficiency blade velocity must be half than the z velocity for the belt and wheel turbine clear students so that is it for the today's lecture thank you for watching my lecture and keep revising fluid mechanics